Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy Class of 2024 graduation.
Would everyone please rise for the singing of the national anthem and Hatikva? Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy Board of Directors, Mrs. Lisa Sandler. Too short. Thank you, Liana. As Liana said, I am Lisa Sandler, President of the Board of Directors of Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy, and it is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you this evening. Welcome to the Barrick faculty, administration, and staff. Welcome parents, family, and friends of the graduates. Welcome to my fellow board members. Welcome to our partners at the Jewish Federation of Greater Philadelphia. Welcome to our Kiba Barrick alumni, especially those of you who are celebrating milestone anniversaries and welcome to our former head of school, Sharon Levin. Also to Len and Lynn Barrick, who are watching on live stream, thank you for your ongoing support of our beloved school and Mazal Tov on your grandson's graduation this evening. Most importantly, welcome to the class of 2024. Before I address the class of 24, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge and thank everyone who made this beautiful evening possible. Thank you to Rabbi Lisak, to Ms. Trachtenberg, Ms. Pandian, and our friends and hosts here at Harzion. Thank you to our amazing board members and Mazal Tov to those of you who have ch children or grandchildren graduating this evening. Jeffrey Barrick, Jonathan Zabuski, Jason Hess, Naomi Schachter, and past board president, Joe Carver. Thank you also to our phenomenal faculty for nurturing and giving so much to our children each and every year. It takes a village and we are so very appreciative of all of you.
class of 24, you'll excuse my back, but I'm speaking to you now. This is it. This is the culmination of many years of hard work and the commencement of many more years of hard work ahead. Although you are moving on from Barrack, the friends you have made here will be lifelong friends. You will continue to be there for each other in good times and in not so good times, cheering for each other and supporting each other from wherever you are in the world. You have created so many memories at Barrack, at Muss, on the sports fields, in the theater, and other extracurriculars, and you will have so many more exceptional experiences to share with each other in the years to come. Along with being one of many people to offer you a huge Mazal Tov, I'd like to be one of many to offer you some advice. This past year has been difficult. October 7th changed the way we view the world. As Jews, we have sadly seen the tremendous rise in anti-Semitism, especially on college campuses. I am sure that this is very frightening to some of you, but you are incredibly strong, and your education at Barrack has prepared you well for what you might encounter. Stay strong and stay proud. Focus on what is important to you. Seek out Jewish groups and seek out friends for comfort, that friendship, and unity. It has been said that education is the most powerful tool you can use to change the world. Through Barrack, you have been given the tool of education. You have been taught to critically analyze, to question, to respectfully debate, and to stand up for what is right. These elements are essential. Use them often and use them wisely. Never forget the Derek Eretz values of honor, courage, kindness, and community. Always be ready to do the right thing and stand up for what is right. Be kind. Have the courage to do tikkun olam. Work with others to right the wrongs in this world. You have the tools, you are prepared, and we know you will make your Barrack family proud. Be sure to keep an open mind and try new things. Try classes that sound interesting. Try a new club, try a new sport. Branch out into areas that you never thought you'd be interested in. You might surprise yourself. Trust yourself. You might fail, but failure is part of success. Remember that the mnemonic F-A-I-L stands for first attempt in learning. You might stumble, you might even fall, but you have the ability to succeed and you will succeed. Just keep moving forward. As Collier said, success is the sum of small efforts repeated. Take the time to celebrate your achievements, large and small. And while you are celebrating your achievements with your family and your friends, don't forget your family here at Barrack. Always remember that your community, your Barrack family, is here for you. We look forward to hearing from you and having you come back to visit. We will be watching you and celebrating with you every step of the way. Keep smiling. Even when you aren't necessarily feeling happy, smiling fools your brain into thinking that you are. And if you see someone without a smile, Give them one of yours. Every smile makes the world that much brighter. My final prayer for you is that the future brings you new adventures and good fortunes. Be bold, be kind, and take advantage of everything life has to offer. Mazatov. <clears throat> good evening, graduates families, and friends. This Shabbat, we will read from the first parasha of the book of Bamidbar. As many of you know, Bamidbar means in the wilderness. This book is more focused on the journey than it is the destination. The Israelites have received the Torah at Sinai, but are not yet entering the land. Instead, they find themselves traveling through the unknown in the hopes of finding the land of their ancestors. As they start their travels, they have very little in material assets. Their main strength as a people is the community they have built and the lessons they have learned while leaving Egypt. Parashat Bamidbar is the very beginning of this journey. Before leaving the wilderness of Sinai, God speaks to Moses, saying, Take a census of the whole Israelite community. This is a very important logistical decision. Before getting underway, the Israelites must prepare for the long journey ahead of them. Each tribe must know who will be able to fight 
where they should camp, and who is responsible for the rituals and the furnishings of the tabernacle. It is an important preparation for their new campaign into the wilderness. The Israelites had no idea what would happen as they ventured into a new land filled with countless unknowns. I would argue that our path as students are very similar. None of us know what will happen during the next few years. We don't know who will we become friends with, what clubs we might join, uh, and for many of us, what major we will study. There is an entire world of unknowns as we end high school. So I think we should also take a moment to enumerate what we ourselves have learned and achieved. Take your own census, itemizing where you are right now and what you have done to accomplish this great achievement that is graduating Barrack Hebrew Academy. Calculate, as well, what you might have done better and what you hope to improve in the future. Each and every one of us has learned so much during our time at Barrack. We have developed friendships, written dozens of papers, and learned new languages. Our teachers devoted their time and effort to preparing us for the unfamiliar journeys we will take as we head off to our next endeavors. My goal is not to tell you that you will be 100% prepared for the future. None of us can ever be, since the future is unknown. However, my hope is that we can all take along with us the lessons we have learned during our time here at Barrick and truly strive for the success that each one of us is capable of achieving. I would like to leave you with one more piece of Torah before you embark on this journey. In a famous Midrash, the rabbis teach that the number of people counted in the census, 603,550, is equivalent to the number of letters in the Torah. Each person individually represents one letter. If people are considered separately, there would be no Torah. But together, as a community, we can thrive and find success in our traditions and teachings. Each one of us adds our own spark and light to the Barak community and the Jewish community as a whole. Each one of us will find our place in the larger Jewish community and in the world, wherever we may end up. My hope for the coming years, as we prepare to go through our own unknowns, is that we do not forget our, the preparations and blessings that were given to us by our family, friends, teachers, and our communities. Congratulations to, to everyone who is graduating today, and I hope you may all find your own successes. Mazel tov. ערב טוב לכולם, וברוכים הבאים לטקס הסיום של בית ספר ברק 2024. כשאני עומד לפניכם, אני חושב אחורה על שיעור העברית הראשון שלי, כשהמור החדווה לימדה אותי לכתוב בכתב יד, כמו ברין, או, 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 או כמו שצריך לומר, זיבליבה, נאבקתי להבין מה קורה פה. לא דמיינתי לעצמי ששבע שנים מאוחר יותר, אעמוד לפניכם לנשוא נאום בעברית. עם זאת, אני רוצה להזהיר את הישראלים בחדר, בבקשה לגלות אהדה כשאני מבטא או מתרגם מילה לא נכון, אבל אני אשתדל לעשות את כולכם גאים. אני רוצה לשאת לטיול במנהרת הזמן לעבר. התחלתי בברק בכיתה ו', אחרי בית ספר עממי מוקף בפנים לא מוכרות, מורים וגם תלמידים, ובלוח זמנים מוזר למורה, הכולל ימים A to G. לקח לי כמה שבועות להתרגל גם ללוח הזמנים החדש וגם לפנים החדשות, אבל מהרגע שנכנסתי לקמפוס התקבלתי בזרועות פתוחות. מהר יותר קדימה, רק כמה חודשים קצרים, וביליתי ארבעה ימים באמצע יער בקונטיקט עם החברים החדשים האלה בכיתתי. כשניסיתי לשאוב השראה, קצת השראה, מה לומר במהלך הנאום הזה, ניסיתי להסתכל על... אחורה על טקס המעבר מכיתה ח' לכיתה ט' שלנו. אבל מסיבה כלשהי, לא זכרתי יותר מדי. חשבתי על זה, על זה זמן מה, ואכן נזכרתי. לא היה לנו טקס מעבר. כשאני חושב על התקופה ההיא עכשיו, אני זוכר שזכלתי למיטה הוראי כדי, כדי לצפות בסרט הקפות מרדורש, לכבודה של כיתה 2024. במילים פשוטות, זה לא היה הסיום האידיאלי בכיתה. ביותר לכיתה ח'. פספסנו את הטיול הכל כך מרגש של כיתה ח' לישראל, ואחרי שבועיים של בית ספר וירטואלי, המשכנו להתגלגל מהמיטה בבוקר, העמדנו פנים שאנחנו ערים, ונכנסנו לשיעורים מקוונים, כשאנחנו נאבקים להמשיך עם עיניים פקוחות. אני חושב שאני מדבר בשם הרבה אנשים פה, כשאני, 
שאני אומר, שהיה כל כך קשה לא להיות בקשר עם אנשים, או לא לעזוב את הבית על בסיס יומי. עכשיו, אני לא רוצה להתעכב יותר מדי על זמני הקורונה, אבל אני יכול לומר שבזמן המבודד ההוא, הקהילה של ברק, וליתר דיוק, הכיתה של 2024 זרחה. בתקופות המבודדות אלה, כאשר רבים מאיתנו הרגשנו לבד, והתעצבנו על, המצפח, על המשפחה שלנו, תודו שכולנו הרגשנו כך באיזשהו שלב. מועצת התלמידים של חטיבת הביניים, המסורה שלנו, ארגנה, ארגנה, ארגנה כמה סרטים בלילות, ועזרו לנו להישאר מחוברים. למרות כמה קשיים טכניים, כשהסתגלנו לכך שהכל יהיה וירטואלי, דברים קטנים כאלה הפכו את תחושות הבידוד וקרבו אותי לחבריי. באופן דומה, אף היה דרך שיחות, דרך שיחות זום שבו, שבועיות אפשרו לנו להתחבר אחד לשני ובו זמנית לספק למשפחות שלנו פינוקים טעימים. ההורים שלי אולי לא סמכו עליי שאני אופה אחרי ששתי מכוניות מכבי אש הגיעו לביתי, לביתי כשניסיתי להכין פנקייקס אבל אני, אני שמח לומר שלא רק שהמתכונים הצליחו אבל האינטראקציות הווירטואליות הקטנות הביאו תחושה של קהילה אני רוצה לשתף עוד דוגמה אחת שמדגימה כיצד האחדות של כיתה 2024 תישאר איתי לנצח. בתקופת מס, גם אחרי ימים ארוכים של טיולים ובילויים בשמש, רבים מאיתנו היינו יושבים במעגל על הדשא ומשחקים משחק קטן שנקרא לפטאג. תנו לי להסביר קצת. כדי להתחיל, היינו יוצרים שני מעגלים, אחד בתוך השני, כאשר אלו, אלו במעגל הפנימי יושבים מול האנשים במעגל החיצוני. מישהו באמצע היה קורא בשמות של לפחות שני, שניים שישבו במעגל הפנימי, ואלו, ואלו היו דוהרים להיי פייב לאדם האמצעי, בזמן האלו שישבו מאחוריהם ניסו לעצור אותם. למי ששומע את היסודות של המשחק הזה בפעם הראשונה, זה אולי נשמע קצת מוזר. אבל אני מבטיח ששיחקנו את המשחק כדי לצחוק ולהתבדח. אני מודה שזה לפעמים היה קצת אלים, וייתכן שהיו כמה פיציות קטולות, קלות, ובכל זאת, כולנו יצאנו מהמשחק עם חיוך על הפנים, זיכרון חדש לחלוק ביחד, וקשר, וקשר שיימשך לנצח. עכשיו, כשאנחנו מסיימים את התיכון, ורבים מאיתנו מתכוננים להמשיך בלימודים בקמפוסים של אוניברסיטאות ברחבי ארצות הברית, בתקופה שבה האנטישמיות מתגברת, והרבה סטודנטים יהודים מרגישים לא בטוחים, אני יודע שהכיתה של 2024 תמשיך לטמות בכל אחד ואחד שעומדים לצידי. אם חלקנו מתמודדים עם מצבים דומים, אנו יכולים לתמוך ולעזור בהתמודדות. או בין אם אנו פשוט צריכים תזכורת להיות גאים במי שאנחנו. אני בטוח שכולנו נמשיך להיות שחיות חברים פעילים בקהילות הרבות. עמדנו יחד במצבי מצוקה בעבר, ואני יודע שנמשיך לעשות זאת גם כשכל אחד מאיתנו הולך לדרכו. לפני שאני מוסר את המיקרופון, אני רוצה להודות לכמה אנשים שתמכו בכיתה של 2000, 2024 לאורך המסע שלנו בתיכון. לכל אנשי הסגל וצוות המורים, תודה לכם על המסירות שלכם לחינוך שלנו, על הסבלנות שלכם במהלך הפאניקה שלנו, ועל הנכונות שלכם לעזור לכל אחד מאיתנו, לעיתים קרובות ללא קשר לשעה ביום. לכל החורים והמשפחות בקהל, תודה ששלחתם את ילדיכם לברק, והענקתם לי משפחה שנייה. תודה שתמכתם בנו גם כשנכנסנו לפאניקה בחצות, כשמיהרנו להגיש חיבור באנגלית לפני המועד האחרון, והכי חשוב, לכיתה 2024. תודה שהייתם המשפחה השנייה שלי, ושעזרתם לי ולכל מי שיושב לצד, לצדכם, בארבע ואפילו, ואפילו שבע השנים האחרונות. מזל טוב לכולם, ותודה רבה. I'd like to invite Track to join me on the stage. Okay. 
if you wanted to spend, thank you so much, if you wanted to spend all your time with us, you could have just said so. Making Marty Kwan quit was a really dramatic solution. <laughs> but in all seriousness, thank you. We literally would not be here without you. Between serving as the head of the upper school, yearbook advisor, college counselor, and our psych teacher, we are not quite sure how you find the time to do it all. And even with all these responsibilities, you still find the time to greet us in the morning and meet, us, and meet with us at the piano. While we joke about you reclaiming the role of college counselor, we are beyond grateful that you, who knows us so well, were the person who wrote our recommendation letters for schools. And just when you thought your only interaction with us would be through the college process, half of our grades signed up for AP Psychology. Who knows if we're more obsessed with you or the other way around. Our professional opinion as psychology experts is codependency. Thank you again, the class of 2024. Dr. Dorsch, please join me on stage. Dr. Dorsch, you've seen us through every phase of our barrack journey. You guided us through the terrifying middle school wing, literally and figuratively, fostering our growth from that moment onward. In spite of missing out on our eighth grade Israel trip due to COVID, we still have an abundance of pivotal memories with you at their center. Thank you for being our great advisor from ninth to 11th grade, assisting us in the bagel, muffin, and Lagba Omer sales. The time and effort that you have put into our grade has never gone unnoticed, and we can never thank you enough. We feel such pride seeing you as the head of middle school, as sad as we were to lose you as our great advisor for senior year. Thank you again for being such a constant, calming, and affable presence throughout our time at Barrick. The experience would not have been the same without you. The class of 2024. Thank you all for being here tonight. A few weeks ago, I finally decided to do a deep cleaning of my room. As I was going through the box of papers in the depths of my desk, I found an envelope with my name in beautiful calligraphy on the front. <laughs> After I opened it, I, I saw it was a letter I had received at the end of sixth grade from my core teacher, Ms. Pransky. It began, Dear Andy, after getting to know you during sixth grade at Barrick, I think of you as a highly intelligent student who wants very much to learn and a caring person who thinks deeply about the world around him. She went on further to reflect on our time together in sixth grade. At the end of the year, Ms. Pransky included, at the end of the letter, Ms. Pransky included a list of words describing what each of our classmates thought about us. I'll be honest, I had completely forgotten about the letter, but it got me thinking. Not only did she get to know me well enough, to mention the attributes that I aspire to every day, but she did that for every single person in our class. Yet, she didn't just share her appreciation of us. She coordinated student-to-student -student commentary where everyone in the core class wrote what they admired about each other. Finding the letter from Ms. Pransky brought back memories of not only what sixth grade was like, but who I was in sixth grade. Every year, Barrick's sixth grade class hosts an event called Artifact Alley, where each person brings in an artifact and sets it up for the whole school to see. While every object is in, has an innate, utilitarian, or aesthetic value, when our, often our artifacts are objects that our grandparents or great-grandparents chose to keep for sentimental reasons, the feelings they evoked, or the stories they represented. I displayed my boba's candlesticks because they were one of the few things she brought with her from Poland when immigrating to America. When we choose to keep an object, we are actively deciding what we want to remember about that stage of life. Objects allow us to freeze a portion of ourselves in a moment. Later, we can revisit those moments and our past selves. So I'm going to take you through a little artifact alley of the class of 2024's Barrack experience. Our seventh grade experience was defined by B'nai vote. Almost every weekend, we came together to celebrate our passage into Jewish adulthood. So uh, our passage together into Jewish adulthood 
from the beautiful tree on Liana's invitation <laughs> to Jacob's chic fiberglass invitation. <laughs> um, each invitation and ceremony was unique and personal. They represented how each person chose to share their celebration and represent themselves to the larger community. At the same time that each of us was learning how to interact with the world around us and be our own people while navigating the complex social dynamics of seventh grade, we, can, uh, we continued that growth unobstructed for most of eighth grade. We had a relatively normal experience. We prepared for our Israel trip, enjoyed our reading groups, and we're regular eighth graders. Yet, on March 13th, that all changed. Mrs. Farrell called us into an assembly and announced that the world was going into quarantine because of a new virus called COVID-19. We all thought it would only be a few days off. As the pandemic progressed, it became apparent, though, that we were not going to be returned to in-person school anytime soon. So we were stuck in our houses for weeks on end without toilet paper. <laughs> COVID allowed the Barrett community to demonstrate its resilience. We took geometry tests on Google Forms, attended CORE on Google Meet, and built a paper roller coaster. Yet, Barrick truly demonstrated its tenacity in the form of the hundreds of FaceTime calls with friends, honest conversations with our teachers about what life is like in quarantine, and our eighth grade moving up day. At the end of the year, the whole grade gathered in masks in Barrick's front circle with our teachers. Each of us got to celebrate the completion of middle school, socially distanced, but together. We collected our diplomas and thanked our teachers and said hi to each other for the first time in person in months. Most importantly, we collected these beautiful t-shirts. For those of you that can't see the back, it says Class of 2024, the one where we were quarantined. <laughs> we began our high school experience with the virtual pep rally at 9.45 a.m. on Monday, the 7th of September, 2020. At the same time that we were supposed to be learning how to be high schoolers, we were still in a pandemic. Yet, it provided us with another opportunity to demonstrate perseverance. We, we biked to each other's houses to chat. We watched Teen Beach Movie together before Hebrew class and got chased by geese in our tents. We ate on the multicolored dots in Barrack's backyard. During the winter, we used flamethrower-style heaters to stay warm. And in the spring, there was so much hay that some of us got hay fever. <laughs> but the whole time, we relied on each other, and we went through it together. After being unable to have events in person for nearly two years, we had a red carpet movie night in 10th grade. All of us showed up in cocktail attire, took some pictures, ate some delicious food, and played some, played some games, and then we watched a movie. At the end of the night, each of us received these goodie bags with a mini Oscar award to celebrate the night. Our transition to a normal high school experience continued throughout the year. We brought back the muffin sale, took some verbal chem tests with Mr. Maimon, and, <laughs> and visited Drexel's engineering labs. At the end of the year, we even got together to have our ninth and 10th grade dance together. We did finally get that Israel trip in 11th grade. For a lot of us, must was a life-changing experience. As we were learning about Israel and exploring the country, we were also learning how to function away from home in a completely new part of the world. We figured out how to escape the week old pizza and powdered egg shakshuka of the dining hall and provided ourselves with delicious food with some panini parties. We learned how to, li <laughs> we learned how to live with each other, how to, how to room together, and, and how to share bathrooms. At the same time, we went through life changing experiences. From going to 9 a.m. Israel studies classes to singing Bombs Awaley in the Kinneret after finishing Yam Layam, we truly grew together as a class. When we came back from us, there was a section of the cafeteria where everyone in the grade ate in one big circle together. In one form or another, that unity remained prevalent throughout the rest of our barrack experience. As seniors, we have gone through a stressful college process, but a successful college process. Finished high school, and we're moving on. Throughout our time at barrack, we have collected these objects and memories. Each of them is who you were at a different stage of your life and they track our growth together as people and our growth as a class. Yet, even if our core values aren't so different from the ones Ms. Pransky described in our letters in sixth grade, 
we've learned to incorporate them into our day-to-day -day lives. As we step into the future, let's carry these memories and lessons with us. I challenge you all to reflect on your past, dive into your own keepsakes, and listen to the stories they tell. These artifacts aren't just objects. They are emblematic of our growth. They trace the grit that defines our class, the lifelong connections we've formed, and how the community shaped us into the remarkable individuals we are today. This is one of those moments we will savor for the rest of our lives. Whether you choose your beautiful yearbook, your grad cap, your diploma, or some artifact, other artifact, this moment will be with you forever. Look at the warmth on your, your teachers' faces. Look at the pride on your family's faces. And look at your classmates all around you. These are the people that you grew up with. Take it all in. Experience being together one last time. Let's pause for a second. Can you feel the love radiating through the room? <laughs> Thank you. I'm now honored to introduce our guest speaker, Sigal Kanatopsky. Sigal has covered an unusual and impressive distance in both her personal and professional journeys. Both in a small, born in a small village in Ethiopia's rural north, she made Aliyah at the age of five, having walked for weeks to meet the flight that took her to Israel. Today, Sigal is the Northeast Regional Director for the Jewish Agency for Israel. Based in Philadelphia, she is responsible for building relationships between the programs and professionals. Sial also oversees the Shlichim, or Israeli emissaries, to the region. She was featured in the Jerusalem Post 50 Most Influential Jews of 2022, and she has also been recognized as a leader in social change, including receiving the Rappaport Prize for Women Leading Breakthroughs, and was selected as one of the 50 most socially influential leaders by the Yediot Acharonot newspaper in 2018. She has a bachelor's in international relations from the Hebrew University, and a master's in dispute resolution and management from Tel Aviv University. Welcome, Sigal. Good evening, everyone. Every person needs for themselves some kind of Jerusalem to dream, to aspire, to be excited about to walk toward the long journey to carry in your backpack of life. The chain of generation and the experiences of the present on the path towards the same Jerusalem, Jerusalem of above and Jerusalem of below. My oldest daughter, Shacha, was released from the army a month ago. Our meaningful moment in a, our mother-daughter relationship was 10 years ago when I took Shacha to a roots trip to Ethiopia in honor of her bat mitzvah. The trip was special, exciting, and even for me, I had many uh, new experiences. Although I had uh, lived in, a, in this uh, village and uh, visited after my army service, this time with Shacha, there was something new, something special, because experiencing such a journey as a mother opens a whole new set of observation, thoughts, and questions. And the question that burned inside me the most, I posed to my mom in her home upon return from that trip. I asked my mom, Mom, you lived in Ethiopia in such a beautiful area, abounded with water, growth, and spatial uh, um, places and spaces. You lived in life with wealth and community that did not lack anything. So why did you live it all and for an unknown journey? Why motiv what motivated you to embark on such dangerous journey in which you lost one of your child on the way toward the journey toward Jerusalem? My mom answered, of course we knew that that journey could be dangerous and that we could lose family members. But what, what was our purpose in life in Ethiopia? To be wealthier? We had one dream, she said, one vision, one destination, and that was Jerusalem. My parents' dream and their parents before them and those before them, going back 2,500 years. Therefore, she said, when we heard that there is a way to Jerusalem, for us, she said, it wasn't a question of if, but only when. And when the moment came, there was no, no question for us. This is our mission, 
This is what we have lived for. In this simple but deep answer of my mom, I understood for the first time in my life, in the deepest way possible, the narrative of my parents and my community. And I also learned what, about, what is about hope and resilience. And at that same moment, I also asked, asked myself, what is then my Jerusalem? What is that moment, that destination, or that thing of I will be ready to sacrifice everything I have, and if necessary, to even endanger my life of children? I found my Jerusalem being a social activist, being involved in projects that deal with the long and a complex journey that Israel is making to become a multicultural society that will be an example and model for the rest of the world, a society that will know how to combine our common foundation story with a different communities and different colors and diversity identities that make up Israel. I found my Jerusalem in my current position as a representative of the Jewish Agency in America, where I am able to meet and get to know the diverse variety of our wonderful people outside of Israel and connect them to, to Israel and the Israel society. In this position, I am able to bring the rich heritage from I which came from in order to complete the mosaic of Am Israel. But I also learned that there is no Jerusalem without journey. There is no journey complete without a long and sometimes exhausting trek and having to deal with challenges and obstacles along the way. I would like to share with you one challenge in my, on the, along the journey to my Jerusalem. It took me years of maturity to realize that not everyone in the Israel society sees my Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Moreover, I was amazed and sad to see that to under, under, and, and understand that many people do not see that my, my parents' Jerusalem as Jerusalem. Many people look at my parents and see a completely different story. Some see the story of an unfortunate people whose life, whose life course was predetermined. Some see the story of refugees from Africa that rescue and set out towards freedom. Some see the story of primitive tribe that was able to reach gates to a progress and modernity. Some find it difficult to accept the very idea of black Jews. And I know that the real story, that of 2,500 years old heritage, that of dedication and bravery, that of love for Israel, and that for a dream, the dream for Jerusalem. I realize how dangerous the dissonance is these stories is. Dangerous because the dissonance will determine the face of the next generation, the face of the future leaders of the Israeli society. And I realize that no one will tell my Jerusalem story if I do not tell it myself. And if it is me who has to correct the story and change the narrative for the Israeli public, then bring it on, I'll do it. I decided to recruit people who are responsible for telling stories in Israel, the Israeli media. As a CEO of an organization, Olimbe Yachad, I led a project that took media, uh, senior uh, media uh, personalities to TV, uh, from TV, radio, print, and even social media on a trip to Ethiopia. Trips in which they saw a new surprising narrative one that based on a rich tradition of Ethiopian Jewry. Together, we walk along the mountain trail to ancient Jewish villages. Together, we set Kaddish next to tombstones of, to, that commemorated the heroism of those who embarked on the journey to Jerusalem. Together, we climbed to the peak, to the peak of the mountain where Jewish Ethiopians go up to the, on the sixth holiday and say prayers toward Jerusalem. And there, in the front of this stunning view of North, North, uh, Northwest Ethiopia, in the front of my parents' starting point for their journey to Jerusalem, one of the senior editors of an Israeli newspaper, with tears in his eyes and shaking voice, said, now I understand that for, my, that for many years, I was wrong. We were wrong. I was certain, he said, that I was doing the right thing teach the story of Ethiopian Jewry. And only here I understand how far I was from the truth. And he was not alone. In that moment, standing in front of the, my parents' 
dream for Jerusalem, the first crack was made in the warped story that had been believed for generations. The result of these three two, uh, trips to Ethiopia, which include over 50 media figures from Israel, is evident to this day. They are they also slowly, slowly changing the way that the Ethiopian Jewish community is viewed throughout the, of the Israeli society. And as it said in a well-known Israeli song, the journey is not yet over. The search for the same Jerusalem, turns out, is long, deep, and constant journey. The journey towards a fully repairing the world and the Israeli society. And it seems that the current reality in which we are all living over the, this past year shakes anew the question of Jerusalem, the question of Jerusalem of each and every one of us, the Jerusalem of us all. October 7th threw us all to a new and unknown reality, reality that even we, if, if, a reality that even if we don't understand its long-term meaning, it is clear that it's a watershed moment in the modern history of Israel and the world Jewry. This war has brought unimaginable losses, and a world become hostile, anti-Semitic, and threatening. A world that was familiar and whose future is suddenly unclear. And raises a question about our belonging to our homeland and our right to live in it, really live. And within all this sadness, frustration, and personal and national, within all this confusion, this was the second time in my life where I asked myself, so what is my Jerusalem? What is my mission in this new reality? What, is, what, I know, what can I do to change the situation along the way to fulfilling this mission? And if you, if you allow me to bring this question to a national level, what is our Jerusalem as a nation, whether here in Philadelphia or in Israel, in light of the, what we are experiencing six October 7th? We could see our common Jerusalem through a unity, heroism, resilience, and hope of Israeli and Israel society over the last seven months. We could see our common Jerusalem of hope through the displays of solidarity, embrace, and tremendous support for Israel from our brothers and sisters around the world, uh, from the Jewish communities around the world, including, of course, uh, from the amazing community here in Philadelphia and extended Barak family who continue to show strong support, not only for Israel, but also for the Jewish life here. We could see our common Jerusalem through the ongoing waves of Aliyah, despite the war in Israel, and maybe because the war in Israel. We could see our common Jerusalem in the continuation of the Jewish call for peace, and at the same time, the ability to set a clear moral line between bad and good, between the holiness of life and holiness of death. We still have a long journey ahead of us until we reach Jerusalem to our expected ideal as, ideal as a nation, as a society, but we are already on our way. And to you all, dear students of 2020, class of 2024, who today are finishing this meaningful st stage in your life, you are finishing one, one significant chap chapter and on the journey toward the next chapter at a very critical point in time. Soon, you will be all in an arena, in a, a arena of a global influence, whether leading universities in a country or in Israel. You will mold the future of the Jewish and the secular world, whether you want it or not. This reality will require you to answer the question of who you are and where is your life headed. Everything that you and everyone have experienced in the last few months are meaningful experience to put in your backpack of life, as well as the education, values, tools that you have received in the past years at Berwick. In this evening, this is in, a, in this exciting moment, I invite you all to add to your backpack of life, to your next stage, both an important tool and important question in preparation the next stage in the journey of your lives. The important tool is the house in which you grow up in, the Jerusalem of your parents. Your parents raise a family and choose life mission and a way of life. I want you all to know that you are embarking on a life journey 
from story. Story that is full, big and rich. A story that has something to be proud of, to be thankful for, and to learn from. Use this tool and a way of life your parents taught you, and be proud of it, aware of it when you make choices. And there is also an important question that accompanies this Jerusalem of your parents, of the home from which you are con uh, continuing your journey and to which you will return from time to time to rest your head and garner strength. And the question is only, it is, is, um, and the question is only one that you can answer, not your parents, not your teachers, only you. And the answer surely will be fascinating because the question is, what is your Jerusalem? What is your Jerusalem? What is the dream, the change, the one thing you want to create? What is, what is your purpose in the world? Go find your Jerusalem, our Jerusalem. Atlecha. It's wonderful to be here tonight with so many members of our community as we celebrate the class of 2024. The past few weeks have been busy, full of celebratory events for our school, a true blessing given the events of this year. May we all be blessed to celebrate good news on the horizon, and may we continue to join together in peace, in solidarity, and in many joyous moments. Sigal, thank you for your words and your message this evening. Your story is one of yearning and hope which transcends time and space. Your leadership and love of the Jewish people is well documented, and these three years in Philly and the United States are a testament to your belief in all of Am Yisrael. Your family will forever be part of the Barak family. Thank you for honoring us this evening as this year's speaker. A number of thank yous before I share my own message with our students. Thank you to Ms. Trachtenberg, Mr. McLaughlin, Mrs. Pandian, Rabbi Levingston, Dr. Dorsch, the staff at Har Zion, and everyone who has been involved in tonight's ceremony. Thank you to our entire senior administrative team, our upper school leadership team, and to all of our outstanding faculty and staff. Your dedication and mentorship has helped guide the class of 2024 to tonight. Thank you as well to our students, Max Strick and Jacob Oxman, for providing music this evening, two years in a row. Thank you to our board of directors for your ongoing dedication to our school and your unwavering leadership, partnership, and support. A special Mazal Tov, as Lisa noted earlier, to board members Jeff Barrick, Jason Hess, Naomi Schachter, and Jonathan Zabuski on your children's graduation this evening from Barrick Hebrew Academy, and to past board president and alum Joe Carver on your granddaughter's graduation. Congratulations as well to all of our faculty, staff, and alumni who have children graduating this evening. And thank you to all of our alumni in attendance. We hope that tonight brings back good memories. As well, thank you to Len and Lynn Barrick. Your continued commitment to our school will strengthen the, Jew gen the Jewish community for generations to come. Thank you for your support and Mazal Tov on your grandson's graduation this evening. <laughs> to all of our families in attendance, thank you. Thank you, most importantly, for choosing Barak, 
for your commitment to Jewish Day School and for giving all of us here who work at Barrick the special opportunity to educate your children. And I also want to take a moment to thank and congratulate Rabbi Judd kruger Levingston this evening. Judd has been a senior leader in our community for many years as the Director of Jewish Studies and will be returning to the classroom full-time beginning next year. Judd, thank you for everything that you do on a daily basis, especially those many things that go unnoticed, which make you an even better colleague, administrator, and friend. And a huge mazal tov on being chosen as a winner of the prestigious Covenant Award. We are proud of you and so happy that you have been recognized for your many years of service to Jewish education, the community, and Jewish leadership. Over the past number of months, our 12th grade class has met with different members within or connected to our community, lay leaders, volunteers, alumni, and professionals, to engage them in conversations and discussions about their future, what they will take with them from their time at Barrick, and how they might lead as they embark upon their next journey in life. A recurring theme that we have tried to stress is the power of this network of what it means to be a graduate of this school and how that connection is an opportunity for continued growth, meaning-making, friendship, educational and professional contacts, contacts, and an ongoing chance to pay it forward. Our focus on the idea of this network has been purposeful and strategic. We want you, our students, to see and to hear about and to hopefully internalize the power and the opportunity that arises from having a strong network. We want you to lean into it, to harness and take advantage of this community, and to hopefully find meaningful ways to contribute as well. As human beings, we are social creatures. We can function as individuals, but we are wired to be connected to a group, to be in relationship with others. And the more we move in this hyper-connected world, whether it be for employment, new friendships, finding people with shared values, or seeking groups for safety, the power of strong networks will become even more important than they are today. In the book, Connected, the surprising power of our social networks and how they shape our lives, Nicholas Christakis, at the time a professor at Harvard, and James Fowler, a professor at the University of California, San Diego, explored how your friends and your friends' friends and your friends' friends' friends affect everything you feel, think, and do, and both how social networks form and how they operate. As they write in Connected, quote, our connections affect every aspect of our daily lives how we feel, what we know, whom we marry, whether we fall ill, how much money we make, and whether we vote all depend on the ties that bind us. Social networks spread happiness, generosity, and love. They are always there, exerting both subtle and dramatic influence over our choices, actions, thoughts, feelings, and even our desires. And our connections do not end with the people we know. Beyond our own social horizons, friends of friends of friends can start chain reactions that eventually reach us like waves from distant lands that wash up on our shores." End quote. It can be difficult to imagine the power of our connections outside our own inner circle, but those connections can have tremendous impact on our own life trajectory. As an example, and while I won't take answers publicly from those in the audience, I will ask the adults to consider these questions and share your own answers with your graduate later. How many of you, at some point in your life journey, have gotten an interview or a job based on your network because somebody you know put in a good word for you? How many of you have been in a difficult situation, be it having to navigate a challenging conversation at work or needing something for your child that you couldn't provide and tapped into your network for help or recommendations? As a result of your network, 
How many of you have found a mentor to support or guide you in your endeavors at some point in your life? Networks are powerful not because they exist, but because you can tap into them at important times in life and extract benefits. It could be a job or an opportunity. It could be a new thought partner or a friend. It could be help in a challenging situation that you could not resolve on your own or a contact you may never have met otherwise. In a speech by Professor Christakis on his book, which you can find on YouTube, he notes that networks magnify whatever they are seated with. You put anything in a network and it will magnify it. But you must put something into that network. You must contribute. It doesn't, on its own, give rise to phenomena. In a separate TED Talk on this topic, also on YouTube, he adds the following ideas. We form social networks because the benefits of a connected life outweigh the costs. Social networks are required for the good and the spread of good and valuable things like love and kindness and happiness and altruism and ideas. And when you think of life in terms of networks, he adds, we realize that it is the ties between people that makes the, makes the whole greater than the sum of its parts. On October 7th, we awoke to the horrible news of what was occurring in Israel, not fully comprehending the scope of this tragedy until much later in the day and into October 8th. It was on that Sunday that we decided to bring our 11th grade students from Moss back to Philadelphia. I do not equate what occurred on October 7th for the community in southern Israel with the experience of our students. On this point, I do want to be clear. But I want to speak to the power of this school's network in trying to solve a challenge, one that no one was trained for, to bring our students, in fact, all my students, over 100 at the time, back to the United States in this most difficult moment. As most people know the story, we worked very cl closely with our partners at JNF to bring our students here. This partnership was crucial. However, there were many other individuals who played a key role in helping us find a solution or provided support and guidance as we planned for and led an exit strategy, which El Al had informed us would not be possible until after October 20th. Here are some of the profiles of individuals who were invaluable to us in the days after October 7th. Barrack board members, Akiba Barrack alumni, spouses of Akiba Barrack alumni, friends of Akiba Barrack alumni, parents of Barrack students, multiple individuals all connected to Akiba or Barrack in one way or another provided guidance thought partnership, contacts, connections, and security, all together leading to a solution. Some individuals we reached out to directly for help. Others heard about our situation and reached out to us. Anyone we needed was available in a moment's notice. And those whose expertise we truly needed and utilized were with us every step of the way until we landed in Boston on October 12th. No one asked us for recognition. They are only known to those of us involved in everything that happened. They did whatever they could to help in service of this community and our students. This is our network. I bring this story to you, our students, so you can hear from me directly why networks are important, what strong networks can accomplish, and how far-reaching and powerful the Akiba Barrack Network really is. It is one of mo those moments in my life that validated for me why this community is so special and underscored that involvement in this school is much broader and more expansive than one can even realize. The basics of this story, however, it's bigger than us in this room. It's bigger than this school. Our network starts here, but it is much larger than our community. 
much older than our community, and more globally diverse than our community appears. To add one more profile to the network of people who helped us, they included a colleague of mine who I worked with in a very different capacity nearly 15 years ago. We hadn't spoken in years, not because of anything negative. We lived in different cities and our professional lives no longer overlapped. And yet, hours into my flight to Israel on October 9th, and with our plans still not fully confirmed, I received a WhatsApp from this individual. It essentially said the following, Marshall, it's me. I'm involved now. Don't worry. We will make this happen. This is also our network. As the past year has reinforced for all of us, we are part of a much larger network, a network which is thousands of years old, spread across the four corners of the earth, and nearly 16 million people strong. Am Yisrael, the Jewish people. Tragic events should not define us, nor should they be the catalyst to bring us together. But in the span of time between October and now, we have all cried together, worried together, and mourned together. In this time of pain, however, we have seen and been part of a network that has elevated our bonds with one another. We have prayed together, raised money together, volunteered together, marched together, raised our voices together, and advocated together. We have been there for people we know personally and people for whom we have never met, and they have been there for us, all because they are part of our network and we are part of theirs. How many times have you asked an Israeli friend how they are doing with care and concern this year, and they have asked the same question to you with even more care and concern. Whether Jerusalem or Philadelphia, Tel Aviv or Paris, Haifa or Gondar, Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Ethiopian, Bukharian, Orthodox, conservative, reform, unaffiliated, religious, secular, rich, poor, learned, or lacking the Aleph Bet, this is our network, and this is your network. Am Yisrael, Am Anetzach, the Jewish people, the forever nation. Our network is strong, and it will be strengthened because of you and by you. So please, my request to our graduates, as you graduate from our school at such a critical time in our history, Lean into this network. Lean into the Akiba Barak network and the much larger network that is the Jewish people. You may never know how much you will benefit until long after you have been contributing. And you may never even know how much you have contributed yourself. But others will. Because when you think of life in terms of networks, it is the ties between people that makes the whole greater than the sum of its parts. Mazal tov to you, the newest graduates of Barak Hebrew Academy. Would Mr. Tom McLaughlin and Ms. Rebecca Trachtenberg please come forward to present diplomas? <clears throat> Rabbi Lisak, members of the board of directors, faculty, family, and guests, I have the distinct pleasure to present to you the members of the class of 2024, all of whom have completed the requirements for graduation and are entitled to receive a diploma from the Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy.
Abigail Faye Jacobs. Raphael Hammermesh. J. Bertram Goldberg. <laughs> Calling Mr. Jonathan Zabuski, Vice President of the Jack M. Barrack Hebrew Academy Board of Directors. for Haley Madeline Zabuski. Jordana Benet Harwitz. <laughs> Jacqueline Jane Torikashvili. Talia Cohen. <laughs> Noah Cohen. <laughs> Calling Mrs. Naomi Schachter. ETO President and Jack M. Barrett Hebrew Academy Board Member. <laughs> For Isaac Samuel Dahan. Jacob Joseph DeMarco. <laughs> Calling Ms. Moore Aharoni, faculty member at the Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy. <laughs> For Ido, Alan Aharoni. Julia Lauren Luderman. <laughs> Ian Geller Nocella. <laughs> Jack William Henry Kelson. 
<clears throat> Mordechai Asher Singer. Andrew Ryan Jacoby. <laughs> Idan Michael Held. Isabella Hadar Abramovitz. Jonathan Amar. Benjamin Goldberg. Calling Mr. Jason Hess, Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy board member. For Lucy Rose Hess. Chloe Ryan Hockfield. <laughs> Calling Ms. Corinne Rocker, Director of Alumni Engagement at Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy. For Fallon Greer Rocker. Holly Hannah Isaacs. <laughs> Calling Mr. Jeffrey Barrick, Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy board member. <laughs> For Jack Mitchell Barrick. Kayla Brooke Garber. Don Benjamin Miller.
Bryn Alexandra Landau. Saul Pinsky Elsala. <laughs> Calling Dr. Joseph Carver, former board president and class of 64. <laughs> and Miss Patty Sheckman, Akiba Barrack alum, class of 94. for Ellie Carver Sheckman. Daniel Isaacoff. <laughs> Isabella Garber. Gemma Callen Dengel. <laughs> Sophia Bess Mittman. Lillian Jane Coons. <laughs> Sivan Rose Dottie. Calling Ms. Eva Kaplan, Akiba Barrack alum, class of 96. For Zoe Lila Kaplan. Jordana Wilf Uffberg. <laughs> Gabrielle Faye Thomas.
Addison Lane Smith. <laughs> Stacy Shayla Lipson. Rachel Sarah Loeb. <laughs> Stella Ruth Resnick. Miranda Helena Eisenstein. <laughs> Samantha Marley Katzen. Catherine Ariel Broker. <laughs> Calling Miss Hedva Tsabar, faculty member at the Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy. <laughs> Vertal Rachel Tsabar. Emmanuel Jed Schlar. <laughs> Calling Ms. Rachel Scheinman, faculty member and Akiba Barak alum, <laughs> class of 89. For Benjamin Asher Scheinman. Marigold Bubbles Warman. <laughs> Eliana Eliza Weinstein. Calling Mr. David Matez, Akiba Barak alum, class of 85. For Liana Ruth Matez.
Will Zoe Kaplan and Liana Matez please come to the podium to lead us in the Shiakiano blessing. Rabbi Lisak, members of the Board of Directors, family, faculty, and guests, I am pleased to present to you the class of 2024. Mazel Tov! Thank you. 